So today we get to see a Fairchild Farm. A Fairchild Farm is a new place I have never been. It's down in Homestead. It's about 80 miles south of Truly Tropical. And it is part of Fairchild Tropical Botanic Garden, uh, which is in an area south of Miami known as Coral Gables. And Fairchild Tropical Botanic Garden has been open to the public since 1938, which makes it really old. <laughs> it's, uh, I, it was, um, it's amazing. Uh, you know, Robert Montgomery, who was a local lawyer ages ago, and David Fairchild, who was an unbelievable plant explorer, uh, sort of had this collaboration going. Uh, Robert Montgomery provided a lot of funding and Fairchild went around the world, every continent except for Antarctica. And he went looking for unusual plants, uh, you know, endangered plants and useful plants. And he actually introduced, in, over the course of his life, more than 200,000 plants to the U.S. Uh, so crazy, uh, <laughs> crazy numbers. Um, but when he was collaborating with Robert Montgomery, he was specifically interested in uh, palm trees and cycads. So Fairchild Garden has a huge number of you know, palms and cycads. Uh, very nicely laid out. A local architect back in 1936 laid out the whole garden and they planted it with, with all these different palms and, um, and cycads and other uh, unusual trees too. So in 2003, Fairchild Tropical Botanic Garden got a wonderful gift. It was one of the best gifts ever. It was from Frank Williams, and he was an avocado grower in Homestead. He had 20 acres, and he gave it to Fairchild to promote tropical fruit, research it, and support the local farmers. So. They have been working at this since 2003. Uh, you know, the first step was to remove five acres of avocado trees and plant mango trees and other tropical fruit trees. And so they've done that and uh, they've been really trying to help the community, a lot of outreach to the community. And we are really excited that we get to see this grove. Nat, who is sort of in charge of everything that happens at Fairchild Farm uh, is going to show us around. So um, picking mangoes, five acres of mangoes, is hard work. Uh, are, do you work like extra hours during, or you know, do you? It, is there like a, yes. a backup <laughs> supply of volunteers to move in at that time I'm, of year? We're I'm, I'm looking it. for more vo volunteers. It, it's not easy getting volunteers to do it, and. You do have to spend, it, not with him, he, I, I mean, he, he knows exactly what to do, but if you have a new volunteer, it's, it, it, you, you gotta make sure they're picking the mangoes at the right time. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, uh, uh, if you have a bunch of new volunteers, it can actually end up being more work than, than just doing it yourself. So you gotta have the right volunteers and you need some initial supervision. Uh, of course, um, Dr. Vernon didn't need that and, and, and Mark, and, <laughs> and it, we all learned, um, but it, yeah. 
it, so we are looking for more volunteers to help pick. And I imagine that there's some fruit that is just not saleable, but very edible, and volunteers probably get a good supply of that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's, yes, there's, there's good fringe benefits here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we keep the, uh, the propagation nursery supplied to the volunteers up there. Mm -hmm. We bring stuff. Back. Oh, okay. Yeah. So no matter what area oh. it, um, you're, you're volunteering for in, in the Fairchild organization, you get some of the benefits from the farm? All the volunteers yes. will benefit. Yes. Um, members also have exclusive benefits that they can get from mangoes, too. We'll give them first shot at some of the better cultivars. We'll give them better deals. Um, I would just keep a lookout. Um, you know, if you're a member, you, you might get an, e an email blast or something like that, or we might let you know that there's a special cultivar up. And, and yeah, we will offer that to the members first. There's benefits to being a member as well. Um, well, that's, that's definitely good because, you know, the, the gardens is beautiful. I know that there's special events that go on throughout yes. the year, and uh, some of them are just amazing. Uh, and, of course, they, you know, plant sales and such. Yeah. But uh, to have first shot at the mangoes that you're growing here is, uh, mm -hmm. is a great benefit. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, people should be joining the garden and volunteering and all <laughs> yep. sorts of things. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, uh, perfect. So, uh, you know, the, of course you have the mangoes and the avocados. Uh, what are the other uh, fruit trees that you grow that, pe that uh, generate the most interest? Um, uh, the jackfruit actually generate quite a bit of interest and uh, and the, the other tropical fruit, the sapodillas and so forth. And we're, we're working on instituting dragon fruit. So we have a new stand Excellent. of dragon fruit mm -hmm. uh, planting that we did uh, last summer, last fall. Yeah, it seems about okay. like a year ago. Yeah, a le little less yeah. than a year, but anyway, um, so that's coming along nicely. We're looking to see a little productivity this summer, mm -hmm. which is pretty interesting for that short a span. Yeah. Uh, how much? No, I don't know, but uh, by by next summer we should be in full production in dragon fruit. The the, the most interest is generated by the mangoes. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I can understand that. No doubt about that. <laughs> so, um, one of the things I'm sure people would like to know is, you know, apart from the man the members of Fairchild Gardens getting first shot at a lot of the the mangoes that you produce. How do you sell your mangoes? Uh, you know, I know it probably changes from year to year, mm -hmm. so it's good to check on what uh, what's happening at that particular time. I'm hoping that Fairchild uh, on their website has some information. Yes. But what, what do you think this next mango season is going to be like for, uh, you know, like is there going to be fruit available to somebody who might be in town from out of state? There, there, there will always be fruit available at the garden, at the main garden. And I expect that we'll see a lot of online sales this year as well. Um, so you ship uh, fruit then? No, no, no. no. Oh, the, okay. the online, it, it'll be online order for pickup. Uh -huh. um, there, there, there could possibly be some shipping um, done through a third party, but um, it, online sales will basically be for pickup at the, the main garden. We, we, we're we're hoping that you'll come out and visit the garden right. and pick up some mangoes at the same time. And, um, the, and the garden <coughs> is open seven days a week, open isn't seven it? Days a week. Yeah. So yeah. do you uh, take mangoes there uh, like yeah. every yeah. day? Every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm guessing people would want to know about what time in the day would you be <laughs> taking it? <laughs> I, I would get there early. I, I would expect the mango set up by around eight or nine. Um, and I'd expect the best ones to be gone by midday. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning online sales being a way to reserve sure. um, yeah. the fruit. So you don't have to rush out to the garden to get it. You can make that reservation and come by and pick it up when, you, when, you, when, when it's best for you. Well, it sounds yeah. great. Okay. Uh, yeah. So hopefully we can go take a look at the Grove. Yeah. Let's, let's go take a look at the Grove.